Good evening, friends, and welcome to the 25th annual Grab em in the Brisket podcast. <laughs> no, sorry, that's my best, like, Jim Nance. Uh, welcome to the Masters intro right there. It, hey, it's Masters week, guys. Uh, I know we're, we got a lot of barbecue planned uh, coming up here shortly. We got a Robert Rocha. He's going to come up and just give us an update on all the ins and outs of competition barbecue. Um, first and foremost, guys, hey, it's great to see you. How's everybody's week been? <laughs> Well, my week was it's great. Like a stunner. Yeah, it's I don't like know. A stunner everyone question. surprised we asked or what? Yeah. Was, oh, it's like it's weird. I asked that every I, week. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I didn't cook anything this week. If that's what we're getting at, but uh, oh, it's been good, James. It's been really good. It's been nice being here uh, in this beautiful environment that we have in this lovely uh, uh, spring April day. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a different feel in the air. You know, when uh, we we just got through with the lunar apocalypse. Are you doing the golf um, thing? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> he still is. You know, is. I, I don't really, I actually don't care about y'all's guys' weeks. So the whatever. lunar I'll apocalypse that didn't melt Texas. I'm not yeah. done, James. Okay. Uh, the, the lunar apocalypse that didn't melt Texas. I was doing a great impersonation, by the way, okay? Um, no, man, it's it's been a great week. I, I think that uh, we, Monday was lunar apocalypse. How do you not have a better week than what we just went through? You know what I mean? Like it was, it was cloudy, it was overcast, but there was some pretty cool video and shots. Uh, and I saw a few videos of people that were. Uh, one of them took. Uh, it was the. Uh, it, it took a year of planning, and he went to a location that they basically got birds, uh, and these it's these black black birds, black crows, whatever it is. But they're just out there, just spinning, right? Because it's getting darker, and that's what happens at that time of day, right? They, they go to the air and start to look for food, and uh, he captures a couple of shots. They're sick. Mm. I mean, it's it's just it's it's cool what people thought of. I, I know this is a huge thing, and I didn't never put any thought into this. And they were talking about there was no porta potties, and there's no food, and there's this outage, and no electricity, and, and run for your lives, and get your guns. Uh, but at the same time, man, it was just like for me, it happened. And I was inside of an office. And I yeah, came no, out, I didn't, and yeah. I go, "Did it happen yet?" And they go, "Yeah, yeah." And I go, "Did it get dark?" And they go, uh, "I don't know, not really." And I go. This sucked. <laughs> yeah, I kind of did. I went outside. It was cloudy, and I'm like, eh, now I go back inside. Yeah, and that okay, was about it. That, that was my whole experience. Yeah, I had my whole family out in the driveway. It's just like laying there watching. I drove around for like an hour trying to find the little glasses to to buy. Everybody's blind today. Yeah, nobody <laughs> had them. The only place yeah. I had them was Sonic, and you had to buy this freeze thing to get them. So I had to buy a bunch of these Jesus. slushy drinks yeah. to get some free Jeez. glasses. Yeah. So what you're really telling us, John, is that. You didn't have to work. We were all just stuck at work, and <laughs> yeah. you're driving around buying slushies. Well, for, that's uh, what you want to take from it, James. Yeah, okay. I was having family time. Yeah, it, it, that, that's awesome, John. It, it, that cool. really is cool just story, a, John. a precious hey, moment cool story. for you and your life and your family. <laughs> cool story, I really bro. am uh, jealous. Uh, my uh, uh, Nobody at my work had glasses. A lot of them were just staring up in the air, and they, they used their cell phone to kind of block, and they were just like looking through the screen Yeah, mm. um, and taking some pictures or whatever but i did glance over to one guy and he, he he turns around somebody talks to him he looks over and he's like squint and he's got like a little like uh moi- moisture coming out of his eyeballs You're sunburn like, on his eyeballs <laughs> like, do not look up there i saw i saw another kid uh some uh kid looks like they're out i don't know where it was but he had this um um telescope uh, set up and it, he's looking down like he thinks that he's looking down uh He's looking down the wrong part of the telescope. <laughs> he's in the wrong hole. And he's, he's adjusting it, and the, the, where the, uh, the the eyepiece is, he's putting a uh, piece of paper up like he's projecting a image onto it. And then he leans his head over in front of the uh, the giant mirrors, and it's reflecting off the sun, and it catches him right in the dome. And he's like, oh, and he freaks the hell out. But there's one minute he kind of looks at the camera like, Look how cool I am. Like, I know what I'm doing. Oh, it almost caught him in the eyeball. I saw the video. That had been done. It almost caught the dude in the eyeball. And, like, it wasn't like a this dude slapping his face, rubbing, like, (laughs) like he just got burned. (laughs) Right. You know, he's like a little ant right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uh, they're calling him Patches. Yeah, right. Uh, (laughs) Right, Patches. Uh, You know, one thing that I've I've been wanting this and doing something, like, I'm always talking about cooking something inside the house. I'm always trying to think of a new dish, a new something, right? I've been thinking about this chicken parm now for about uh, about eight weeks. I remember ten you talking weeks. about it. Yeah. I have right. It's a certain restaurant in town. They, they serve this badass chicken parm that has this uh, fettuccine alfredo pasta. Well, you have to ask for it. It doesn't come with it, but you got to you got to do your thing. 
So Monday, I'm driving home from work, and I'm just, I'm just like, man, I just kept thinking about it. I knew I had some chicken at the house, and I was like, "F it, dude, I'm going all in. I'm going all in, straight to the store. Literally got every single thing. Walked in, Alexa, play some Italian cooking music. Let's go all <laughs> in on this thing, dude. I made five uh, chicken parmesans with a um, fettuccine alfredo." Uh, pasta paired it up for the entire house amazing killed it That's i have no cool. idea what i'm even doing i didn't watch a video i was like you know what i've seen i've seen too many things out there i've got this it's not that hard mm -hmm. whatever it wasn't it's like I, i've seen chef emerald Lagasse That's what do I'm it saying. all the time <laughs> yeah and I, I i had the fresh mozzarella i had uh i had the the i did the uh moots. moots man moots. the moots <laughs> i had the moots uh, it was, it was, dude, I'm telling you right now, the first bite, even the kids and, and just whatever, we had, we had, we had the entire house full and even Keegan ate some and that boy never eats pasta or tomato sauce or anything else. And he was like, I'm going to try it. It's fine. I bet it did taste good. It was, it does. I did, they roasted garlic. Oh, mm. yeah. Let me ask you this. Alfredo sauce. Is that just butter and Parmesan cheese? And like heavy whipping cream, okay. essentially. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, James. But yeah. not the way yeah. I do it. Well, the video I saw was like the original Alfredo yeah. sauce that was uh, in Italy. Mm. It is essentially just a couple of sticks of just some nice um, grass-fed yeah. salted butter and just like a mound of like Parmesan grated, grated Parmesan. It's it actually sounds amazing. Yeah, it, it is. They yeah, just toss it in noodles over and over again. And then, it's just really fancy bubba yeah. noodles or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's well, all it is. Or what's the cheese wheel noodle thing that you know? Remember when we took the girls out and they had the uh, the wheel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, "Oh, this is." They're, they're both of them like this. Can't wait, ha, ha, ha. dude! This thick, cheesy looking thing. It's like a started, block of cheese. A big wheel it started of to like cool off quickly, and as it cools <laughs> off, it's congealing. They were not happy. They were so under. Like they're immediately uh, looking at our plates. They're like. <laughs> They ordered a pizza. I, dude, they yeah. literally decided, yeah. okay, we're going to order pizza. At the, at the same time, we're, we're just eating. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We're idiots. I don't know. Did they call that a raclette or some type I of, I don't know. It's I'm making up words. Little. Can I mm. Texasify this? Can I can I make yeah. this spin this a little bit? Got me. Go. What if it's like a Texas barbecue restaurant, yeah. but instead of just a cheese wheel, a guy just is, has a giant brisket just tucked up under his he's arm. He's it. <laughs> and he just <laughs> comes to your table, and he's, like, just cutting off pieces of brisket. Slicing. Slicing. <laughs> he's like, would you guys want the point or the flat? Say when. <laughs> when? And you're like. No, dude, I like I love the idea. Keep going. Like, there's always, like, uh, you want a little, it's like that, not the pepper guy, but you have, like, right, the right. Little, little sauce guy, like, tss, tss, spraying behind it, right, or whatever. I, it would be in the grater. Like, can you imagine having, like, this, this, this grated brisket just coming out in chunks? Like, cut, 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 cut. Yeah, that's great. That's great, James. Yeah. That's gonna. Uh, I, I had a couple. I saved a couple articles today. There's a couple of notable barbecue restaurants, and this is maybe a little bit of a barbecue news. But there, there was a couple of um, barbecue restaurants that are shutting down. One of them, most notably, was the um, the Seal Store in um, they say Austin. I think it's like Pflugerville, somewhere in that area. It's it's been in operation for like 130 something years seal store seal store never heard Damn. but it's spelled it's spelled c-e-l-e -E. and Seely. it no no c yeah keely yeah yeah well okay we can keep know. going that but it specifically <laughs> said spelt like the artist seal oh yeah uh Kikali. yeah exactly <laughs> that's what i would have thought i'm like Seely. never heard of that artist <laughs> you're being ridiculous yeah i'm just kidding but it, it was also it, it's been around for so long, and, and uh, it's been featured in a lot of like movies. Like one of them has been hey, the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I think there was a, a couple other movies, whatever. I had it written down. I'm not going to go through my phone try to figure it out. But that I thought that was like pretty Where's, notable to what? go. Pflugerville, I think yeah. it's like how far away is that? That's uh, right outside of Austin, right? Hmm. Is it in between the Lagrange area and Austin, and I don't know. Hmm. No idea. No, no I, I know where Lagrange is. I get no, there. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Back porch. Gotcha. Then there's Austin and San Antonio, and then we're at the Frio River. So I understand that. It's like geography. It's, listen, that's all he knows of Texas. <laughs> yeah, right. He just told you everything he knows. Like, and then I wake up at home, and then it's all I know of Pearland. So yeah, 
<laughs> the end. Yeah. Okay, you're pulling up the map for yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Let's Ty- man. Typhoon, Texas. Yep. Where? Yep. What? Water park is temporarily closed, but. Pflugerville, okay. there it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame rock. that this place I never heard of is shutting down. I mean, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. I'm upset yeah, too. Man. Hey, let's. Uh, well, there's another one that you, hey, uh, you, you think probably have heard of. They're for sale. Oh. You, they're, they, they closed down or they're for sale? Yeah, they shut Ooh. down. Like, um, well, let's just go over there and open up. Yeah, maybe. We'll call it the uh, what was it? We'll call it the seal store as well. Yeah, yeah. Seal Re- resealed. If you get a resealed. chance, uh, Google the seal store. See if we can pull up an image for that. To no, there. It's, it's an it's iconic very store. Iconic looking. It's an store. iconic store. Yeah. It's sad that they're yeah. that they're closing their doors. I don't know what's going on. Uh, obviously, they they have something that's that's driving this. So it's so that's, uh, that's tough. Uh, you know. C e l e. So well, he's, um, yeah, well, I had one more job. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, <laughs> a really just a, a lack of better words. I was trying to say something silly, but I'm not going to. Uh, there was another, uh, the Delta Blues Barbecue. Is that something saying that right? Yeah, it's, a, it's a chain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Papa's, right over there. Papa Zones. Papa Zones. They're shutting down. It was a, um, what they'd say, like a, not a premium, but a, um, <laughs> Um, like a high end, high end barbecue restaurant. Yeah, I went there that once. Apparently, didn't make it. So, oh, really? They're, they're shutting I it thought, down. Dude, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like, I thought it was like doing well. Yeah. Did There's you, one here and one in Dallas, one in. I think so. Yeah. I think right? they're, I think they're cutting ties with that venture. I don't think it's really doing as well as they thought they want. Damn. Mm. Well, there it is. Yeah. High end barbecue. Who would have thought of that? I mean, <laughs> huh. yeah. Long standing barbecue joint, rustic, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Damn. Yeah. She, well, she gone. She gone. Okay. Hmm. Rip. R.I.P. Yeah. Did Just we get kidding. A picture of it. Yeah. A little tiny one right there. Okay. There it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got a star. Yeah, okay. that doesn't look familiar yeah. to me at all. Right. Well, they need to work on their upkeep. No wonder they're never right. mind. <laughs> Is this Trust, before or after they shut down? Yeah. Trust it. I'm kidding. It's yeah. a joke. I, I did have Pick on that, that click, a picture of the food. Come on, just pop that little thing right there. Oh, never mind. It's just raw food. Okay. Oh, it's a boil. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Well, All right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that there looks, it is. Okay. Cool. Uh, I, I did have a couple of... Uh, are you going to the barbecue news? Whenever talk? you're ready. Yeah. Okay. I, I did. Ha- I shot a couple of pictures. We we joked about the Masters earlier, but that, that is coming this, up this week. And there, there's a... Uh, I screenshotted a couple of pictures. One was notably is like it was a, a board of um, what they sell there, food-wise. Mm, like a uh, menu board? Mini board. Okay. So I, I thought it'd be cool to, to bring that up there so you guys could check oh, that I out. I like it. Yeah. And see, we got the pricing on there. Wait. Is this for real? No, this is for real. Egg salad sandwich, one fifty. That's right. Why is it so cheap? I mean, it's on cheese, it, it's always cheap like that. Why? Yeah. I don't. Know. It's just the so this is the price they would have charged back in the day, and so they've kept the same prices for, for the fans. That's oh, right. How much do the, fa- fa- the fans pay to get into this place, though? A lot. I don't right? know. I I don't know. If you got to ask, you can't afford. Well, that's probably yeah. true. But, but barbecue it just says barbecue. Barbecue. Hey, you're the, not the, really the, sure what you're getting. The, pimi- the pimento cheese sandwich. At a dollar fifty, you can't beat it. That's a deal. Yeah, that's probably a steal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Grilled chicken wrap, three bucks. Come on. Yeah. Masters blend, fresh brewed coffee, dollar fifty. Do you think the barbecue sandwich is pulled pork or like chopped beef? Chopped beef. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh no, it's nah, pork. It's pork. It's pork. One hundred percent. I'm just kidding. It's pork. Um, you were kidding. That's a joke. So and, and so I came across an article. Uh, earlier, Google was uh, enough uh, was uh, friendly enough to just suggest it to me. Sixteen hundred dollars for a master's ticket, so there that is. Well, that's where they get you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the food should be free. <laughs> yeah, well, you can afford your dollar fifty pimento sandwich at that point, right? So now, if you go to uh, so the the clubhouse there at the masters, I think it's called the is it the crow's nest or it's the nest or it's. Um, yeah. I'm not really sure, but I took a little screenshot of it. That so, says Crow's Nest. So. Crow's Nest. So they have a um, secret beer there mm. that nobody knows what it is. <clears throat> and they've had this beer for years. Okay. Years. Uh, You're just guessing. And it's the master's beer. Mm. So every time you go, you can get the uh, the, the Crow's Nest. Uh, you get like a kind of a souvenir uh, little cup or whatever, but nobody really knows what beer it is. Everybody loves it. I think it's the best. Um, Jesus. But you don't know what it is. And so this hmm. article goes into talking about it's light beer. how they're g- going to try to figure out what the beer is. 
and and he's like, okay, it's got to be in the the area of where 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 the golf course is, and they tried to pinpoint some breweries, but they really couldn't line out what it was. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting to have their own little secret beer there. You know who could figure that out? Mm. Maybe a group of guys who's had like a yeah. thousand beers yeah, in no. the past couple of years. Right. Hey, who's tried like every single beer every single week? That's right. guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let for, us try it for just ten cents a day. You could sponsor <laughs> four, <laughs> <Okay>. five guys. <laughs> well, you just to, somebody buys us each Masters tickets. We'll to the I'm Masters. Be honest with you guys, one hundred percent. It's a Texas beer. Yeah, you, you think, think so? It's yeah. just oh, a shiner. Yeah. They're like, holy crap, this is good. It might be. Yeah, they're just used to like Miller Lite, and they <laughs> yeah. have something with like actual no, flavor it's not in it. Miller, right? it's gotta right. be like. It, I do. It'd be funny. Or also, shiner. and this is not like kind of uh, maybe a little foreshadowing or whatever with our our beer review coming up. Um, they used to, and should should we say what beer we're reviewing? Sure, it's not sure. a secret. If you want a secret? It, yeah, no. it was a Blue Moon. So we got Blue Moon coming up on deck, but they used to have Blue Moon on tap. They don't have Blue Moon on tap anymore. And a lot of people are speculating, like, oh, it's just Blue Moon. They said it wasn't, but who knows? Liars. Mm. If it no, was I'm Blue Moon, they wouldn't be that crazy about it. Blue Moon's okay, but... Yeah, anyway. That's true. All right. Um, do, do they serve it with an orange wedge? <laughs> just like, <laughs> it's hey, not Blue Moon, I swear. Right. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, did you get your pitching wedge with that? Yeah. <laughs> orange. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let's you go. guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Only if we had some uh, barbecue news. Yeah, here yeah. we go. It's time for the Hot Off the Grill Barbecue News. Brought to you by the NBBQA and Barbecue News Magazine. A uh, quick update. Hog for the, hogs for the Cause just happened uh, this past weekend, and they raised a crap ton of money. Everybody want to take a guess? Have you guys already seen how much it was? Uh, uh, not. Um, take, take a I'm, guess. I'm a guess. Go. Um, Closest one gets a free beer. Two million. Matt. I'm going to go 52,355. Not even close. James. Mm. We're going to go $75,000. Nope. I'm going 3.5. Nope. <laughs> okay. You're done. You're done. $150,000. Okay. Jan won. Uh, it was four point three million dollars. Oh, really? Raised. Yeah. Insane. Wow. Okay. So four point three million, and uh, there's a list of everybody. Uh, yeah, some of the teams raised like over half a million dollars by themselves, and then you know it kind of lists everybody all the way down to like. Twenty thousand dollar teams and ten thousand. Everybody just pitched in. It's amazing. It's really cool. If you guys haven't checked out Hogs for the Cause, uh, you should. We'll definitely uh, tell you all about it next year again. Hopefully, we can make it out there next yeah. year. Do you think they got my ten dollar donation? Oh, for you sure. Think I think it's somewhere. actually on the list here. It's right below. Uh, yeah, it's right there. there it is. Um, the other thing I got for us. This is from uh, our buddy Kel sent this out. The B and B Charcoal Live Fire Extravaganza. Smoke Slam, the uh, the barbecue cook-off we've been talking out there, yep. uh, competing with Memphis in May. Yep. Mm-hmm. They are uh, presenting <clears throat> this B&B Charcoal Live Fire Extravaganza, and it's hosted by the NBBQA. So it looks to me it's going to be similar to what he was doing out there at the conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be live fire sampling. There's going to be uh, music. There's going to be a barbecue bazaar, which I guess is similar to what they did out there at the Royal with different... Uh, vendors set up showing off what they can do, showing off some of their products and whatnot. Uh, and there's going to be some barbecue influencers out there doing a meet and greet. So that's pretty cool. Alfragoni, the Mad Scientist Barbecue, Seattle Butcher's Wife, TFTI, Derek Wolf, a whole bunch of them out there. That's wow. May 16th through the 18th, wow. Tom Lee Park, downtown Memphis. Dude, it, if Al's going, you got to be there. Yeah. If you're in the area, swing by for sure. It's going to be badass. And, yeah, they're, they're definitely trying to gear this thing, it looks like, to, to bring in the public and make it a, an event. Uh, there was a list, actually. Maybe be on here. Some of the music that's going to be out there playing. Uh, you guys would be interested in some of this. Tone Loke. Oh, let's go. Rob hmm. Bates. Cool Young cool MC. Medina. War. War. And the Bar Kays. So. Okay. Cool stuff. Wow. Yeah. It's an actual... I don't know. Fun music to listen to, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got for the Hot Off the Grill Barbecue News. Yep. Hey, there it is. I made eye contact with him. He did it. That's good. Thanks, Raul. <laughs> Raul. Thanks, Raul. Hey, I always hey, say Raul. I can't even say your Raul. name, Raul. He likes Jesus the way I say it, okay? Me. Can you get your shit together? We're going to get a t-shirt, and it's just going to say Raul. 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 Oh, that's 100% happening now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know, smoking meats isn't just cooking, it's an art form. The aroma, those deep flavors, the patience, it's a whole experience. And behind every great artist, there's the right set of tools. If you're 
aiming to build your own barbecue pit or dreaming of a custom design tailored just for you, SmokerBuilder.com has your back. Led by Frank Cox, their expertise is unmatched. Offering blueprints, kits, and insights, they turn every barbecue dream into a flavorful reality. Imagine your backyard, the center of attention, and at the heart of it, a smoker that's uniquely yours. It's more than just equipment. It's about crafting those unforgettable moments. And with the guidance of Frank and his team, you're setting the stage for magic. So whether you're a seasoned pit master or taking your first steps into the smoky world, head over to smokerbuilder.com, fill up your carts, and be sure to use the promo code GRABTHEBRISKET in all caps to receive your 10% discount. Smoke on. Hey, I'm sorry to throw this out here randomly and it's out of left field, but when you guys are cooking burgers yeah. and you're making your own patties, mm-hmm. do you put egg in that mixture or not? I've never done that. You never crack an egg and put it in the Meatloaf, the maybe. Meatloaf, yeah. for sure. Just meatloaf? You mm-hmm. never do that with a regular no, burger? No, no, I've, I've done it I with don't know burgers. If I've, done it. I've cracked, like I'm making burgers for a bunch of people and I've cracked a burger. I, I'm cracked an egg in there and and uh, or a couple of eggs and mix everything up and just make form patties and whatever i didn't tell anybody i wish i probably should have probably said that, hey I, i'm gonna put egg in there <laughs> i'm uh, allergic yeah because hmm. you have some dietary restrictions i'm just anything. asking because i've, I've always put egg whenever i'm making my burger i always thought if it like helped hold it together or whatever and the last time i cooked i didn't and it came out great everybody loved it but i was like said oh i don't have any egg to put in this i cooked this week i did uh some burgers cracked the egg put it in there and it came out very meatloafy, and I'm like, oh my god, should I have like not been doing this this whole time? Mm, like yeah. I was always taught you put egg whenever you're making your thing, and it came out very meatloafy. Yeah, I don't use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm so I'm like, I, I was like, I've just been doing this wrong my entire life. Yeah. So I, okay. I think, uh, well, I saw a video <laughs> earlier this week with. Uh, I'm sorry, man. That stinks. <laughs> Nobody yeah. ever told me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw a video with uh, Malcolm Reed, and maybe it was an old video or a new one that he busted out, but. Uh, Talk about the use of mayonnaise making hamburgers. Mm-hmm. He's like, I think he said about a tablespoon of mayonnaise per pound of hamburger meat. He's like, dude, it'll make the best freaking hamburgers. All right, I'm swapping mm. it out. Just, and, mm. and he just uses oil. Blue, blue it's just plate. a fat, right? He always uses a blue plate. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not I'm using can we, Hellman's. Can, yeah, maybe one of these days we'll get into the whole, like, Hellman's, blue plate. Dukes. Dukes. Yeah. See which one's the best. best what's, what's the craft with lime? Ooh. Craft with lime, oh, yeah. McCormick. McCormick, McCormick with oh, lime, yeah. dude. I'm not gonna lie, it's legit. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I see. Acts as a binder, adds flavor. That's why I've always. That's how I was taught. I've yeah. always done it. It says egg yolk. Hmm. So. Yeah, gotta not do the whole egg. You did yeah. the whole egg. I, I always mean, do the whole. You egg. never do the Shut whole up, egg. Shut up, John. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, John. Hey, you never go full <laughs> egg. <laughs> Jesus, only half egg. You went full <laughs> egg. Oh <laughs> God. No wonder. Can't yeah. go back. No. So if, yeah, for for a meatloaf, yeah, a couple of eggs, uh, and then you're gonna have your your. I know. I accidentally crumb. made meatloaf last time. So. Yeah. Breadcrumb. You can do rice. You can do a mixture of both of those. Uh, I don't want to do breadcrumbs or anything. I think I'm, I want to try this mayo one next though. No, 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 not for a burger. For a meatloaf. No, no, I'm, I'm not making meatloafs. Come on. <laughs> do you make the, meatloaf? Where's the meatloaf? Or do you make meatloaf? Though? <laughs> meatloaf, ah. san- meatloaf yeah. sandwiches. Really? Yeah. Oh. I should shoot a video on that. Me love sandwiches. Do that. You should shoot a video on anything, honestly, at this <laughs> but, point. Yeah. yeah. I'd love That's that. <laughs> Meatloaf sandwich on just regular white bread. Yeah. Legit. Isn't that a hamburger? No, it's meatloaf sandwich. What's wrong with you? Are you listening? But it's a fold over. It's got it's got a oh, fold over. Yeah, it's a fold over. It's oh, not okay. like you're not oh. putting like yeah. two pieces. You're wearing bread. listen, huh? you're wearing a dirty uh wife beater, possibly tank top. You're eating a fold over meatloaf sandwich. You're out of cigarettes. I don't know. Like, I, I'm I'm picturing a whole thing right now, James. No, we're not mm. doing foldovers. So, what? I have no issues with the foldover, but I'm gonna need more than one probably. Okay. No, eat yeah. the sandwich. Like, make the the, the patty mm-hmm. and eat it like a, a burger, right? Isn't that weird? I never in my life eaten one as a burger. A meatloaf? Yeah, because a meatloaf is always like just yay Brick. big. Yeah, it's and a weird shape, right? It's a weird shape, yeah. so it's enough to fit like right into a uh, a piece of white bread. Boom. Oh, so hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Anyways, we're off topic here. We'll just uh, we'll we'll move on. We have, to, we have to pull that one out. Yeah, bro, cut all, cut all that out. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Threw down some ribs last night. Used the chicks that smoke spicy rub. Mind blown. 
Dude, that, that's what I'm saying. Like the Chicks of Smoke spicy barbecue all purpose rub, dude, it, it is a game changer for sure. Yeah, if you folks have not given it a shot, you need to. Honestly, your barbecue will thank you. Chicks of Smoke, it's at sucklebusters.com. <laughs> do you guys want to do a mail call real quick? Let's do it. All right. Let me just uh, let me just pass this over to somebody else to open. Matt, you want to open one? Yeah, sure. Pass it down. All right. What do we got here? Captain's Choice. Rum Runners Barbecue. Mm. Okay. Did they yeah. tell you they were sending anything? Yep. Let's I think see. that's my buddy down go. there in Florida. Here you go, James. Mm. Uh, nice Rum one. Runners uh, Award Winning Barbecue is about the Flora, Flora Bean lifestyle. Nice. Yeah. Florida. Floridian? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, is it Flora Bean? No. Like, Floribian. It's supposed to be like yeah. Florida Caribbean. Is that yep, what they're going that's for? That's correct. That is correct. Cool, man. What's it look like? What kind of seasoning is that? I don't know. It's a... Um, AP? It's like an AP, yeah. It's salt just got pepper, that yellow tint to it. Salt, pepper, sugar, so. garlic, yeah. black pepper, spices. Yeah, Rob Dop. Yeah. That's his name. Rob Dop. Yeah. So, All right. I've been messaging back and forth. He's got a lot of a lot of cool stuff in the works. Nothing that I'm allowed to talk about yet, but uh, when he gets it all figured out, some cool shit. We'll get him on to talk about it. Very cool. Yeah. I like those stickers, man. I need one of those for that, that cooler. Yeah, I already stole some, so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> cool. I always take a little dad text when I open a box. It smells yeah. good. It smells amazing. Does it? It looks good. looks good. I'm oh. cracking it open. Oh, yeah. Are they both the same? Are they the same or two different ones? Same. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Perfect. I'll take one to my house. You guys take one to your house. He probably hears us always complaining about how John takes everything, so he said it was a couple. One. Yeah. I don't think so. James, what do you got? Oh, hey, back to me. Um, so we got a um, a few bags of rubs uh, coming in from Jeff. Uh, this is barbecue and more rubs. Uh, man, dude, it, it is a sweet uh, lineup that we got here. We got a couple of stickers, but let me just run through here. Very intriguing. We got bar- peach fuzz. Mm-hmm. We got the OG, the original rub. We got the apple chipotle rub, SPG mango chipotle, and the total chaos. Mm, does it give so, any description of any of these? It does not. Wow, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Okay. I really want to try the total so chaos for some reason. We're going to have to figure it out. I kind of want the peach fuzz, so. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say the, the fellow's name was? Uh, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, appreciate it, Jeff. Thank did you, you write Jeff. that on a napkin? What is that? Uh, it's just a piece of oh, paper. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Like, it's handwritten. I mean, yeah. geez. Yeah. The level of just uh, customer Care? service yeah. and support yeah. here. Yeah. The love, bro. Really. I'm not sure. That's what I'm saying. It says, thanks again for trying out my rubs. Enjoy. Can't wait to hear what you guys think. Jeff. Jeff and Rob. Thank you. Chill. Booyah. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, listeners. Ever been at an event or business gathering and noticed that one thing just stands out? A simple item, but with a touch of personalization. Bro, I know exactly what you're talking about. Coolynation.com, it's all about making an impression. Custom design coolies that aren't just about keeping your drink cold. They're making a statement. Exactly. And for businesses out there, listen up. Whether it's in a corporate event or your product launch or you're promoting your own brand, these custom coolies can be your next big marketing win. Imagine your logo or brand message right there in the hands of potential clients, partners, and customers. It's subtle yet impactful. The quality and design of flexibility they offer top tier it's not just a promotional item it's an experience so for everyone looking to make their mark whether it's in business or just adding a personal touch dive into coolynation.com elevate your brand elevate your events with coolie nation every sip is more than just refreshment it's recognition make it count so head over to coolynation.com forward slash brisket and get your hook up Okay, so look, hey, Rob's not going to be able to join us today. He's having some difficulties. I think he's running behind schedule. So instead of that, we're going to go live this, this with is our... Good. Uh, what? Yeah. Grab him in the brisket. Beer, Beer review. Uh, Let's yeah, go, uh, man. Uh, oh. Hey, so okay. uh, James was kind enough to come in and get us some Blue Moon. I can't believe we, we haven't done this before, James. We have not. I not. checked the Is list. Is that weird? Okay. So we, we haven't done a lot of the regular beers. We, we did, haven't done Bud Light. We haven't done Coors what? Light. We, we had to have done Bud nope, Light. Never. Haven't wow. done. We haven't even done We haven't done any of the light beers, really. Do you guys want oranges? We're never going to do we it. We got some. Oh. You, you have oranges? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, what? I was like, wait, is there like a salad bar in the back? Or? Oh, wrong. <laughs> Dang it. You, you had us, man. You had us, Oh, my us, gosh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it is. You have to pay a higher monthly fee for that, I think. Yeah. No shit. Blue moon. <laughs> Premium or just, hey. just pay your monthly fee. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> if you want charcuterie, <laughs> it's going to cost you. Um, okay, are we tasting without first? Nope, I guess we're not. We're just going full full moon. Okay, there it is. Is this is this uh, an eclipse thing? We're doing blue moon because the eclipse this week? Yeah, is that what you're so. doing here, James? Yeah. No, I didn't. I was have about any, to say, did you make that up? Like, I didn't have any uh, pre-planned uh, thoughts that I was at the grocery store, and I was like, "Shit, I don't think we've done blue moon." Sub subliminally. That is correct. Subliminally. Yeah. Subliminally. Sub subliminally. I can't say it today. I can't I, say it. Uh, words I can't say. I did say uh, so at um, a restaurant here in Pearland. They do offer a. It, it's a uh, blue moon. Mosa. Oh, oh. blue mosa. Blumosa. They just mm-hmm. put champagne in it. Yeah. No, no. Okay. It's Blue Moon, and they with uh, orange juice. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I, I guess that makes sense. Water yeah, down rather, mimosa. I'd rather just have the <laughs> just give me a Blue Moon. The Blue Moon. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like nine a.m. Like, uh. Wow. It, it, there's it's got a orange stigmata. Yeah, you're fine. yeah. There's a stigmata that you can't have a beer yeah. at nine a.m. It doesn't sound. <laughs> it's okay if you could have like twenty. Like uh, champagne and orange juices, right. Bloody Marys. Bloody Marys, no big deal. Vodka, great. But once you try to get a beer and a shot of vodka, they you're the, you. you're the you bad guy. Problem. Right? Yeah, right. No. So come on. Yeah, you might be right on something, James. That's actually uh, that's a valid point. That's a valid point. Hmm. Uh, did you see the? Uh, the, the, the and I don't want to get off such. No, you know what? Let's get on this one. I don't want to mm-hmm. talk about the uh, the, the, mm-hmm. d- the dumb tomfoolery that I see sometimes. Hmm. Uh, okay. okay, so we'll preface this by this is a blue moon with. An orange wedge, which I think makes them ten times better. Dude, that's delicious. I mean, that's what you're going to get like at 100 percent of the places. If you go out to get a blue moon, you go by yourself, then you get to provide your own orange wedges. But yeah, these are good. It is. I mean, I think we've all had a blue moon in the past. It's been a I long time. Yeah, I haven't had one in a long, long, long time either. So I was just thinking about this. I don't know where I was. I I think I was in California last time I had a blue moon. I was at Olive Garden. I remember we were specifically. Right. Were you? Yeah. I feel like I feel, for me, blue moon was one of those beers. Was like when I didn't like beer yet. Yeah. I would have a blue moon. It was like for people's first beer outside of a light beer. Right. Like, oh, you know what I mean, have a blue moon with an orange wedge. That's fancy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's I'm cool. just saying, like it's it's pretty crisp. It is. It, it's a good beer. It's better than I remember it. I know. I that's what I'm saying you know what I mean? right now. It's I'm like, why am I? Better. Why did I stop drinking? Blue why moon? am I not drinking good. Blue Moon right now? Hmm. I would I say this know. is a this is a breakfast beer. This is a know. beer that you have on the way to work, uh, <laughs> and then maybe again on the way home, but mostly on the way to work. No, nope. like I a six. Pack. I don't think it's a breakfast beer. You're just eating an orange and you're <laughs> yeah, drinking dude. the beer. No, one hundred percent. This this. <laughs> This I, beer I, like will cure a cold, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Vitamin C? Vitamin right. C? It's you just could like, probably just put one of those little emergency tablets in this thing, and you'd be ready to go. Rock and roll. Dude, I'm, that's I'm what surprised we they don't, they don't, they don't, <laughs> I'm surprised they don't sell this beer in like the uh, the, the drug aisle. You we know should have I mean? had like a... Mm-hmm. Uh, just right next to the emergency. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, emergency a or a... Six-pack uh, of Blue Moon and some, uh, yeah. yeah, some emergency. Let's go. <laughs> and an orange. These are good, huh? Click, boom. Yeah. No, I agree, man. This is a great beer. Um... It's weird that we don't drink these, right? My son. My son drinks these. Mm-hmm. Does he really? Yeah. It's pretty good. I don't you know. know. Let's see when we get down to the bottom of this, if we still feel the same way. Up right. Yeah, this is... Okay. Yeah, well, I'm ready to score. Gets his, yeah, yeah, go, go, go right for it. it. Go. One okay. more drink, though. Take one more drink. And well, then I'm, 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 get, I'm ready no, to No, you score. have to do one more drink. I'm definitely doing a drink. No, I know you are, because yeah. I told you to. Okay. I'm ready to score, though. Uh, no, you're not. You have to take a drink. Yeah, right, right. You're actually right. Are you doing this because you want to, or look he honestly, guys? You, know? you, you didn't even talk about the can, or the the bottle. You, you didn't even say mm. what style of beer this is. I mean, well, this is a Belgian white. Uh, this is iconic, I guess, in its way because it's been out for so long. Uh, but but this beer itself is like we've all seen. That. I guess this is why we're not talking about it. If I say a blue moon, you know what a blue moon looks like, mm-hmm. right? So you don't have to describe the bottle or anything else. This is just it's a blue moon. But it's yeah, but some way some people better it than is. I anticipated. Some people might not know this. This thing is is brewed with uh, orange pills, like Valencia it's, orange pill, yeah, actually, and, yeah. and that's why that that mm. the whole orange slice. Everybody's like, why 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 are you putting an orange slice in it? Just drink the beer or whatever. But that that's why. I mean, the the beer is brewed with the orange peel, so it has that that uh, the aromatics. It has a, that that flavor with it, and so then you add a little. Of that fresh pop of that citrus, citrus that mm. kind of just like, like just 
pops. Yeah. What if you put okay. like a little something, something vanilla, not maybe ice cream, maybe something else vanilla that tastes like a two tone, one of those ice creams that's like ice. Mm. What? You're talking about? Like a dream sickle? Like a dream sickle, yeah. No, dream sickle. Like, no, don't uh, do that. No? No. Okay. Maybe though. That's not like a what would idea. be a. A beer float? Yeah. yeah. What? So this is great with orange peels. What mm-hmm. would be a horrible like additive? Pill? You know, like apple pills. Watermelon rind. Watermelon rind. I mean, honestly, it probably wouldn't be bad. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> okay. I eat it. <laughs> Watermelon. You do? Yeah. Okay. The so, rind? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually really oh. good for you. It's high in nutrients as well. Uh, okay. Can we go back to this real quick? Because <laughs> I'm about to bust this. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm about to score. bust this. Uh, this needs. Okay. This is a breakfast beer. And I totally agree with you now. But it's also called a screwdriver. Mm. And if you would do a shot of vodka <laughs> and a, a little pop, a, a, a wedge pop, and a full beer, dude, talk about money. Okay, Like, like drop the vodka into the, into That's the it. cup? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And right now I'm thinking this is like a 9.5. What, nine what happens after you put that vodka in it, though? 10? Uh, 11. Perfect 10. 11. 11. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is that a number? Honestly, I mean, it's like an adult pre- Capri Sun. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, phenomenal. Yeah. So we're, 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 where are you at? Let me take one more sip. Yeah, take another sip. <sighs> John's not feeling it. I so. really, I really didn't want to give it a nine. I know, but it's there, isn't it? I'm, I'm gonna go nine two on this. Actually, Dude, it's such a good beer. It's way better than I remember it being. Like, I know. I'm, I'm feeling silly for not like getting no, this. No, I know. I'm like, why s- did I stop getting we're, blue? Moons? We're thinking the same thing. You it's know really mean? good. <laughs> She's got. He's got me. How much is a six pack? Yeah, it can't be more than like what ten four, bucks. Fourteen. Jesus no. Christ! I would say fourteen dollars. I'm saying ten it bucks. It was less than that. Yeah, really? Like eight bucks? No. Let me Google that. I don't know, man. <laughs> Let me Google that. I don't buy any beer. I, I just drink all of y'all's. <laughs> like I, I can't tell you last time I bought beer. Yeah, I don't know. The five point four percent alcohol by volume. Um, it's great. That's a great freaking ABV for for a, a mild beer like this. Yeah, it's perfect, dude. John, <laughs> you guys are stupid. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I am just, blown away right now. We're just telling you how it is. Yeah, we're, exactly. We're, we're very. I think what it was is that we went in with a low expectation. One percent. And this is just you know, blowing us away here, dude. Ten bucks. Yeah, ten ninety nine. There it is. It's even cheaper than I thought it was. There it is. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you right now, guys. It's better than I thought it was. It's cheaper is... than I thought it was. <laughs> Chance be like, if you don't have Blue Moon in your 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 garage fridge when I come over here, I was like, why I am don't, I coming over? I'm here? not coming over. I think I like the can better than the bottle. Can looks better. Can does not look better. Yeah, 100% it does. I, okay, look. All I know is we drink it out of the bottle and we're digging it. Can yeah. may change. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. It's very okay, good. Give a score. Good. I feel like you're down wrapping yourself. Like, oh, gotta go. Gotta go lower. Gotta do this. I'm usually, just saying. Usually you score higher than us on yeah, those beers. On, so let's just, see. Give us your weird. Score. Not necessarily. Um, Hon- honest feedback, John. Don't yeah. just be. I'm not. Just be this real. is a very good. Be real this with is, yourself. This is borderline great beer. Be real with yourself. Borderline great. So yeah. you're in the sevens. You say great. No. Great is eight. Great. Is, yeah. So. So I'm, I'm I'm on that side of the grate though. I'm, okay, I would say okay. this is an eight point one. This is a, eight point this is good. one. I would drink this again. Into, I'll probably buy this. You're probably right. I'm, I'm like, oh, why haven't I had these more? These are exactly. good. But this isn't something that I'm going to want to drink very much of or very often. Uh, but okay. it is good. Is there is there? Hey, what about this? Is not too often for you. What what flavor profile are you having right now? Where you're like, yeah, I could have one, but I couldn't have. It tastes I, like juice. I can never have two. It's, it's very. It tastes like you're drinking juice. I don't drink juice either. So. It's just not, I could have it's one. It's just not my thing. It's good. I, uh, it is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying this very much. It's great. But I couldn't have, never have two. But it's not excellent. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Sorry. Mm. No, hey. I th- Jay, Sorry. you and I are Everybody's, just rediscovering uh, why Everybody so has awesome. their own I like opinion. It. I this like is, it. I do what, like it. What was your score? This is why I Eight like one. this right here, man. 8-1. Yeah. Okay. We nice. sit here. We're eye That's to eye. I think it's a very good score. It's a great score. We're solid people. Gems. We're gems. Let's see if James is on our side or not. All right. All right, James. Yeah. All the pressure on me. I personally like wheezing the juice. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wheeze the 
juice. I like this beer. You got to uh, wheeze the juice. Wheeze the juice. So the juice. I, I'm going you to solid just a 9.7. Oh, my seven. God. Nine Ooh, seven. Man, you went, you nine had to go the highest. Oh I'm saying, James. Nine seven. Wrong. That's what I'm saying, so James. Wrong. You know what? I'm so glad uh, that he oh, went after I'm going to have the garage fridge stocked with good, blue yeah. moons. I'll drink them. They're great. Webs. John probably orange get this out of our top ten. Wedges. As it should be. This should not oh, be in the top geez. ten. I'm sorry. This is it's a great gonna, beer, but yeah. it's not a top ten beer. Oh, it is. It's blue a, moon it's is a delightful beer. It's a freaking blue moon. This is a great beer if you're 22 years old. So it says the original name was Belly Slide Wit. Belly slide wit. Yeah, it was. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The old BSW. Yeah. Yep. Uh, belly slides. So yeah. until, now, now we're going to call them belly slides. Hey, do you want a belly slide? I love it. I actually like that better. I might change my score. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. You're locked in. 8 1 is a rookie ass score. It's fine. We'll be re reviewing next week. Use your taste buds. <laughs> Get your life together. It said, uh, it wasn't until someone said a, a good beer doesn't come <laughs> around until once a blue moon or. Right. That's. Cute. That is cute. Okay. Well, All again, right. hey, so hey, real quick, just to recap this, uh, for out you out there in TV land, I, I'm, I'm going to be drunk. I don't know what's going on <laughs> my words. They just don't work the way I want them to. Uh, if you're out there trying to think like, Blue Moon, never seen this, whatever else, just remember this, okay? 9-5. Yeah. Matthew. I say 9-2. 9-2. 9-2. Jonathan. Nine, nine seven. Jonathan was an eight, eight one. one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's very good. It's hey, very good. James. Nine seven. Nine seven. Man, this is a great beer. Get your hands on some blue moon. Obviously, if you're in the Americas, uh it's there or North America. I don't know, the South America. Your wife drags you out to go yeah. get a hundred and twenty dollar brunch and she's getting her little champagne yeah. things or whatever. Just get a blue moon. With yeah. a shot of get vodka. A blue moon. All right. With a don't shot feel bad of about getting a don't, don't feel listen. bad. All right. Hey, but so if right now if we're going to name the Blue Moon shot of vodka and uh, the orange juice, what are we naming that? The belly slide. It's called the belly slide. The belly driver. Mix between a belly slide and a screwdriver. The belly driver. Mm, that sounds kinky. No, the belly slide. <laughs> Call it the belly slide. It's weird. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, gosh. listeners, if you've, I, you, I'm sure you've had a Blue Moon, go ahead and call in or leave us a message uh, and tell us we've lost all credibility for scoring this that high. <laughs> Um, four three four eight two nine two two nine nine, and four three four eight two nine. Yeah, nine two two nine nine. I'm gonna Perfect. say there, there's uh, two more left in the cooler. Oh, so we're drink yeah. those. There it is. It's five point four. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I'm gonna be late tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Or yep, send us yeah. a message any of the social media or email us info at grabbingabrisket dot com. There it is. Yeah. It's a World Wide Web. In case you're wondering. WWW. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I love the fact that every time. Uh, we used to do it. Hey, no, every time that I go, like, when I'm trying to fuck with somebody, every time I'm like, okay, when I know I'm going to do it multiple times, so it's WWW, and then they look at me like this blank stare, <laughs> and I just I'm like, and I say the whole thing, and then, I'm, and then I go, I'm like, Somebody's, I'm like, I'm ready for it, right? I'm like, okay, WWW. And then I look over and they're like, Jesus, bro. <laughs> really, Grandpa? Right? right? It's just, it's so funny. HTTP it's unreal. backslash, yeah. backslash right. colon. Backslash, <laughs> right. Hemi, yeah. Hold <laughs> on, hold on. I spelled <laughs> that wrong. <laughs> I said Hemi. <laughs> Hemi. Dude, I, I don't know what happened, dude. Maybe I'm not drinking enough. Like, my. Like alcohol tolerance, like I skipped a few of these these AA meetings we've been going through here. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Next week my tolerance will be higher. I'm on it. Jeez. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. What do you say we talk? Uh, I guess we're done. We're done with the grabbing a brisket. Uh, Beer review. We kept oh. that really tight. It yeah, was good. very tight. Yeah. 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 To the yeah. point. I don't know if you yeah. guys caught last week. James was uh, scolding yeah. us for yeah. everybody trying to go low, and that's really his thing. So if you guys could go higher next I went, time. Dude, I just went high just then. We're all competing for you the did. lowest. You did. Yeah, right. but yeah. I think Matt went very, what is it, base? Vibrato. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't do that. Uh, I, James, yeah. what is it called again? S- um, vibrato? I don't is James Baritone. Drunk? Baritone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Barely, Baritone. Barely, barely tone. 
Uh, Tone deaf. <laughs> What's me? Yeah, I, right. I have a yeah. speech impediment, guys. So yeah, I have a list. <laughs> yeah, way to point that out. <laughs> I have a list. I promise you, it's not now my fault. Now you tell us. I'm gonna need one of you guys to grab your nuts yeah. when yeah. that and just get that high get that. high pitch. Hi. Hey, I'm Hansel Aaron from the BFYTW Podcast, here with my buddy Stevie. Hey, what's up? And Augie. Hey. And we're here to, first of all, uh, categorically deny the rumors going around that all we've been doing lately is copying other podcasts. Uh, this is categorically untrue, and we deny it completely. Having said that, please enjoy the rest of the Grab Them in the Brisket podcast. Uh, and when you're done, feel free to check out our new project, Pull them in the pork chop, a barbecue podcast with beer reviews, uh, barbecue recipes, swag, and so much more. Pretty sure it's never been done before. All right, let's go into the barbecue talk, guys. Barbecue talk. Oh, we don't have a jingle for that. Thank God we don't. Thank God we don't have a jingle for that. Well, I think I think uh, this episode we kind of like landed <laughs> on doing pork he belly because you've been cooking a lot of pork belly recently. We've been doing a lot of pork belly lately, and. Um, did you the, repeat the same word he said? I did. He's like, we do a lot. <laughs> also, we do a lot of pork belly. And, yeah, and we do a pork belly lately, and you've been doing a pork belly okay. lately. And James yeah, cut off. That's great. Hey, uh, no, listen, James, you've been killing it in pork belly. No, not really. I mean, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been ruining it. First time, I've been. First time wasn't. So I've been good. not having a great time with it yeah. uh, lately, but. Uh, I think it's it, it's a uh, it's learning your grills and learning what you're cooking, and then cooking on that particular grill, whatever. Yeah. So uh, I cooked on a Weber, terrible. I cooked on the 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 Super Fifty Five from SmokerBuilder.com. It came out money, and then I went back to the uh, Weber. Terrible, terrible. Yeah, mm. like Charles Barkley. Hey, there's horrible. something there. Hey James, I don't know what's Too hot. there. But well, maybe I used some of that damn jealous devil logs and it just it went five hundred degrees and it just nuked everything. I'm like, I can't use this. This yeah. is too hot, jealous devil. You need two logs. <laughs> you put eight logs. I need you gotta it. be careful with that. Stuff. I have to work it on my hot. I have to work on my fire management. It is the, some, some minion method. It was very hot and uh there was a. Uh, I did dial back so I learned from the very first get go. Um I used a lot of like sugar. I used a lot of like uh, I used a a, a sweet yeah, brine. It caramelizes it burns. I used a yeah. sweet brine, and then I had a lot of rubs that are on there that had a lot of sugar in it. And man, dude, it, it, I think I, I we had a couple of videos, and and maybe we all can uh, um, throw it up every once in a while when we're we're discussing this. But at one point in time, it looked good. The sweet one that I did, mm -hmm. I should have just pulled it. Mm. Done. What'd you try to do? I wrapped it. Uh, I was uh, like, okay, nuked it. maybe yeah. it needs just a little more time just wrapping it up and it will just be great. Uh, so this is pre-wrap. Oh, that looks amazing. That looks I, like it's about ready to eat. I should have just been done with that. Yeah. I did not. I wrapped it up. You left it in, like, what, what you left you, it in the strips. What, what, it looks what, like thick cut like bacon, really. What yeah. were you looking for, though? What, like, I, I'm, I'm trying to get behind, like... Like, what do you want to and What happen? was your reasoning for it? I think it? I was looking for a little bit more like a mahogany color. I was looking mm. for a little bit more just like that meat just like breaking down. Rendering a little and more. And letting that fat render. So if it would have cooled off. That looks more rendered. So that's <laughs> Jesus, what happened. James. That's what happened. It, Here's your barbecue fail. It James rendered. getting another bottle of Sockle Busters. It rendered too much. <laughs> yeah. um, but, it, and, and we'll get into some of the aspects of cooking pork belly. But if you cook way too hot. The meat just cooks quickly. The fat doesn't have enough time to render, and so it's just like a just. You just a, get the worst of both. Huh? You get worst of the both both worlds or whatever. So I was like, now we're finding out. Okay, the smoker fifty five we put it on there was like three twenty five, maybe it was like three hundred. We went like maybe a couple hours on that stuff, and it came out money. It was mm. good. Yeah. Would you no, run that three hundred? You said. I think it was three hundred. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you want to go any higher than that. Probably no. when you're when you're dealing with pork belly. Correct. Yeah, I would call that tip number one. Tip number one. Yeah. What did you uh, season it with when it, it when it came out good? Because you said two. you said you you did a little too much sugar on that one. So when you did it right, what so did you I got it rid of the sugar. Totally. To a certain extent. Okay. Um, primarily it was just a SBG. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a good. Yep. Little, we, we know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But the uh, grab and brisket uh, uh, SPG grab and brisket rub that oh, we've been oh, we've been working oh, on. So that grab a 
that great. Correct. Hey, it's a badass rum. And so it, it doesn't have any sugar or it's very just minute sugar. So it, it, a lot of it's just like black pepper and, and uh, kosher salt. Um, let that go for a while. Uh, I think they're a little bit of the pit maker first place chicken rub slash rib rub. Mm-hmm. There's sugar in it, um, but I don't think it's a whole lot. And there may be some honey powder and, and what have you in there, but I didn't put a whole lot on it, but it's a low and slow. It's almost like you're doing ribs. Yeah. I think you can get away with a little bit of sugar if you're cooking Correct. it low enough. Yeah. Correct. You won't have an issue. Yeah. I, 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 uh, no, I, I think this, this last little batch you did was phenomenal. Like it, you came over, Matt. Um, we all had some. Did you take some over to Emma? I did. Yeah. What did she think? Do you want me to tell you? Mm-hmm. Wasn't a fan, really. No. She's no. like, no, don't like it. it mm. needs she, to be- she said, I just want to be perfectly honest. And she said that uh, wasn't a fan. She wanted more seasoning on it. Yeah. So that's what it was. So I, a little under seasoned. So, so I actually thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was under seasoned. Now, what I was tasting, I tasted a lot of the pork, and it, it, the pork came across, um, and it, it it was I, I like that flavor profile, and I didn't want to be overbalanced. Mm-hmm. But there was a moment where I was like, "Damn, I was I was I thought it was gonna be more. I thought it was gonna be more of a punch, and it, it, just, it, it a just, little saltier it, kick to it. I think it just didn't live up to what it. And, and the pork has a little salt to it, anyways, right? It's, it's a little saltier uh, there, but uh, but I totally agree. I think it could have handled more mm-hmm. on there. Um, and, but so it was like, good. But it was really good. It was cooked, cooked really well, really well. Yeah. So, and I think that's what really helped the entire thing because the meat, it's like candy, anyways. Mm-hmm. So, I feel inspired. I want to cook some now. I've never done right. pork belly. I have one in my fridge. Right never cooked. Right I'm telling you right now, the best one, the best pork belly I ever made in my life was, uh, uh, um, shit, Marcus. Uh, Marcus mm-hmm. brings down that whole pork belly slab, mm-hmm. and I've I've got the Weber. You got the Weber out, uh, and I, I'm like, all right, well, I throw some coals on, mm-hmm. and literally, you're like, nah, just grill it up, it's fine. And dude, it's one of those ones where you just walked off, didn't really say anything. And I'm sitting there, and I I I just I just hovered, man, and I I'd flip, I'd walk off, you'd come back, you'd hover. You'd flip a little bit. That's what you did the whole uh, slab uh, in one piece. One piece. That's the key. That's don't break that damn thing. Up. And if you do, if you do cut it up, you've got to go to like you can't go one inch cubes. You want to go like a three inch by three inch cube. Mm. You know, big and pieces. Yes, like burnt end pork belly. Huh? Huge, right? Yeah. You know, you 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 want to block. Um, and but when cooked whole, I kept thinking like, dude, we're gonna fuck this thing up, man. Because like no, they brought on a, brought down the whole pork belly, just do it on the pit they have no idea how it's gonna be like i'm like damn we're gonna fuck this whatever dude it was so freaking good yeah and and i just it was just grilled up and then this thin slices you could only because you could slice as thin as you wanted to and you weren't having to contend with well you got a nugget about this big you gotta shove that whole damn thing in your mouth right um or or whatever Mm -hmm. i mean typically that's what i do i Uh, bet you do yeah well no (laughs) good contribution (laughs) little nuggies yeah well don't you just love that though? Whenever you just like have these like random moments where you just like throw yeah. something down and this comes out great, it, and you weren't even like really so, meaning to. So it just one hundred percent. And it wasn't about me thinking it was really great. I was so glad that Christine and Marcus didn't um, think, "Oh my god, you're you fucking ruined!" Like, yeah, thanks 40, for wasting a all forty that. piece, <laughs> yeah. a forty dollars worth of uh, pork belly I brought over mm-hmm. uh, because they were very cavalier about giving it to us, and because we were so sure of ourselves the entire time, we're just like. Well, throw this season you know, over here. Do this, do that. It was so mm-hmm. just like willy nilly, you know. Uh, it came out really good, mm. really good. So I, th- I think one of the big key takeaways is buy the whole pork belly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then cook it whole like that. There's a lot of people that are like that had that mindset, like Mary D. Barbecue. Um, a lot of these like uh, these influencers and these people that are cooking. It's like um, cook it like a brisket, kind of low and slow. You definitely don't want to get into the high temperature range yeah. because the, the meat, what meat there is overcooks and the fat itself doesn't have enough time to render out. And so you're left with this just chewy meat with a big, just mouthful of fat. If you get it right, then you have this like just melt in your mouth, like 
piece of meat that's just mm-hmm. like the best. Yep. And Rendered if you want to add sugar, you, if you want to add a little sauce or a little touch of sweetness to it, do it towards the end. Yeah. And that, I don't Wait know if you saw. Already. Did you see her video she just posted? With the I pork did. Belly? Yeah. She, like you said, she did a whole one. She, I think she cut it into two pieces, but it was still two huge chunks. Mm-hmm. And then she did end up cubing it up, but it was right before she sauced it. And she cubed it up, like you said, probably two or three inch squares. Look like the size of like a, a brownie or something, yeah, right? They, were, they were big. And she just sauced them up and, and left them in a the pan cover, put them back in there. They looked amazing. And yeah. I think that's really the way to do it. I yeah. think the consistency, if you overcook it, it becomes gristly, it becomes chewy, it becomes even the meat, right? Like it, done well, you, the, the, the fact is um, it's nothing. It, it disintegrates as soon as you start to put it in your mouth. Mm. The meat is, think, think of something like a, a ribeye, a, a, a pork ribeye. Yeah. Very soft, very morsely. It's not done right, done right, right? It's not... And, and you don't take that. I think people take their pork belly too too high of a temperature, and I think that's what's that's the thing. You can get the color. I think grilling is you could smoke and then grill. You can grill, but there's a temperature you have to look. You think for. some people think they can they treat kind of like bacon too much? You just yeah, put on a hot exactly. grill and just cook it up mm-hmm. and then that's serve it. it and yeah, they screw it up. Let me ask you this: Do you think it matters when you're picking out your your pork belly, like when you're picking out a brisket or you're picking out a ribeye, because they're all different. Some of them are the, the fat to meat ratio, just like in bacon, is going to be a little bit different from belly mm-hmm. to belly. Does that make any difference when you're picking out your pork belly? You're just grabbing whatever one and going. No, I think it does make a difference. And just like bacon, anything else you're buying in, in, in anything. I, I, when I look at bacon, I don't walk by and pick up a slab of bacon up and, and put it in my cart and walk off like they're all the same. I look at all my bacon, right? I look at the marbling. I look at the fat content to meat content. You want a higher meat content? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to see how this thing is going to... A, a higher meat content is more of, more of a chewier bacon, a a more of a, um, a fat content. The bacon's going to render, and it's going to shrink down to something that's non-existent, <laughs> right? Tiny. I mean, but you look at that, and you want that happy medium, but um, that's why I look like there's certain uh, bacon manufacturers or, or people that, you know... Right, some better whatever. than others. Yeah, way better, you know? Yeah. I, 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 got, I got a bacon confession. Do your own. Just do your own at home. You'll love it. I, I got a bacon confession to make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The last couple times I bought bacon, it's been the microwavable Costco bacon. Damn, dude. Have you guys had that? Mm-mm. Microwavable bacon? No. Isn't all bacon microwavable? Well, maybe. Yeah. But this is like made to be microwaved, apparently. No. Oh, Just, oh no. it was raised that yeah, way? It was raised that way. <laughs> they didn't make it. It was raised, Nobody it was packed, told and it was marketed can, that way. Can you imagine? Hold on. Can, can we stop for a second? <laughs> Listen, little buddy. Hey, hold on. You're going to hey. be microwaved someday. Hey, you're, you're going to be uh, regular fried bacon, uh, but you, buddy, you're going to be microwave. And uh, right. it's the way it is, all right? Tagging microwave. Mm. And then the whole time you grow him up. Yeah, some pig. Yeah, you know, I just don't know if that's the... Uh, can can you do is like, welcome to the Moore uh, farm of family bacon. Uh, we deal with nothing but microwave bacon <laughs> pigs here. It's all the if you think it is, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is farm fresh right. to your table right uh, into your microwave. This is, hey, this is 6,000 watts. Of the best bacon you're ever going to taste in your damn life. <laughs> okay. So so just to recap on some of these yeah. quote-unquote <laughs> yeah. tips what we've gone the, over. What are the excellent yeah. tips? Pay attention to, <laughs> to your cut of, of, of pork belly when you're yeah. looking at it. Don't get one that's 90% fat because there are some like that. When you look at it, like it's just almost all the way fat all the way through. Right. Right. And then uh, when, you're, when you're cutting it up to smoke it, if you're going to do cubes, do them big or do the whole slab like you're saying. Right. I, I did say that, yeah. Okay. okay. Seasoning, uh, don't under season apparently, right? Like that's a big one. Use enough seasoning. Be careful with the sugar. It takes a yeah. lot. And 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 I would tell you right now, uh, a big pro move is season and let it sit. So pork will absorb. It absorbs faster than what beef will. Uh, and it give it time to like that, that reverse osmosis. Give it time to make it a blanket. Give it time to pull. And then give it time to suck that moisture right back in inside the meat as that salt comes down inside, right? So I, I think that's something that right there, it picks up so much flavor. It doesn't take much and it doesn't take a long time because it's it has so much fat in there. It's easier just to just to sink in, right? Mm. Um, so yeah, give give it a minute. Don't season it and throw it on. That's not. That's I think not a lot the key. of bacon. Right. A lot of bacon has like they they add salt to it. 
whenever they package it up or whatever. That's cured. So, right, right. Right. so, so all yeah. bacon's cured. A lot of people right. have that. Yep. And Not I think, pork belly. Unless so I don't think uncured. you have to be so scared to add the salt to your pork belly. No. Because right. it's not going to be like that. Like so I think right. a lot of people just think pork belly, bacon. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. I mean, they kind of yeah. try it's to It's raw. Yeah, it's not been cured. It's not got any any seasoning on it. Uh, next thing we we talked about was the uh, cooking it low and slow. We, we've already beat that into the ground, but mm. don't try to cook this sucker at 350 or 400 or However, else like, isn't, you're not frying bacon here, right? Mm. No, this is not the this is the pork belly, right? So, so think of this: uh, th- this meat has not been cured. Think of this as something that you're like, well, uh, not pork belly. This is the pork butt. You want that? You want that just just morsel to go in uh, and just act like you're like, man, this is this is nothing to chew up. This is no resistance or anything else. And that's mm. when you make really good pork belly. Uh, I don't mind a, a mild chew I, and on, on, on the meat and whatever else. I just don't want this thing to become something you're just like, okay, the, the it's almost like a chicharron sitting on top mm-hmm. of a piece of meat. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not looking yeah. for that. Right? When the textures are so far yeah. apart, it's not good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the last thing I had was, uh, and this is one thing we didn't touch on. How do you guys feel about like finishes or glazes or that kind of stuff? I know it's Texas. We don't want sauce on anything, right? But yeah. for me, I, I like adding a little glaze or sauce or something to the pork belly. I, I'll try it without first, but I like a little sweetness or something to it. Right. How do you guys feel about that? Well, I don't like it in uh, Raul. Can you? Can you? I think we got a couple of pictures or whatever. Um, I don't like. I don't like the rib glaze. Yeah. I don't like just nope. making rib whatever. Um, uh, we did some this past weekend, whatever. Where I, I we kind of like played around it, and I had it on. Yeah, a couple little bites here. Uh, I had it on the Weber, and I noticed, learn from your mistakes, I had it on the Weber. It was way too hot. I was like, okay. It got a lot of color. I was like, you know what? I'm pulling it. I put it in the oven. That's like the pre-seasoning. So I just very kind of coarse, um, kosher salt, black pepper with a little garlic, a um, uh, little onion powder and stuff like that. And then I threw it on the, the Weber to let it finish off cooking. But Weber was like 500 degrees. It was it was hot. <laughs> you so learned. You were like, no, I, was no, like no. <laughs> I went a couple of minutes till it got color. I was like, okay, let me throw it into an oven like 225, 235 degrees, and let that go for like about an hour and a half or whatever to let that fat kind of render down. Mm-hmm. And then I put um, hot honey oh, okay. on the top of it. So it was salty with a little pepper with a little bit of that sweet hot honey. It was good. I just thought I thought your seasoning. I thought it needed more, mm. uh, and I still I did, lacking I, on that. I, yeah, it did right. And the honey was good. It just I, I didn't want the honey to be so forward. I I wanted the I wanted the sweetness from the honey, but not be a kiss of honey. That's right. Little... You know what I mean? Um, I, I thought it was really good. I just think that I I think that the slab is the way to go. I think those are probably a little too small uh, to. To push out, or or it was cooked at too hot of a temperature, um, to being that small. The right? texture so, was off, or yeah, what? yeah, it, it, just a little bit. It wasn't wasn't much or anything else. I mean, it was a good chew, uh, which you want. But again, it, I think at that point it's probably overcooked uh, because it was that. You know what I mean? You feel like you feel like you have a good bite in your mouth. You're like, okay, this is good. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. You know, versus the melt in your mouth. Uh, where you can get sometimes when when you do it with that slab, or or a, a bigger chunk, it it's more forgiving and you're able to get that temperature because that something that small you're like okay I'm I'm at 125 degrees well I'm at 138 degrees well shit I'm at 190 degrees well, that was a span of three minutes so you, you can't you can't walk away from that you're, you're yeah. actually you know what I mean I, I just that yeah. small. So, but well, it, but but was it good? Yeah, it was good. I mean, it's phenomenal. I, I, I'm I, I'm nitpicking, and and I know that you know we're all jaded here because because we cook so much, we've had so much barbecue and so many so many different p- p- facilities and restaurants and uh, badass chefs and you know what I mean, like it just just a observation. Right. So sorry you well, failed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, there's a reason why they don't call us grab them in the pork belly. Yeah, so, there it is. There it is. No, I uh, totally agree. Hey, uh, so we're going to keep learning. Yeah, not a fail, by the way. It, you, it was really good. James. Yeah, we argue most A minus A's and A pluses. Yeah, it you was, know what I mean? It was like, not bad at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. If you are going to do a glaze or something, I would say probably do it right at the end there. Last, last. 10 minutes or so, right? Tim, and then let it caramelize. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, is there another blue moon in there? Yeah, there is. Ah, perfect, man. Pop I'm going to say if you want to be high end and put a barbecue glaze on there, uh, nothing wrong with the apple habanero um, um, rib glaze, the rib candy from uh, Texas Pepper Jellies. Yeah. Mm. 
I hear a lot of high-end barbecue slash steak uh, restaurants are oh. using that for their um, killings. Uh, what? What? <laughs> that are they're using that for their uh, Killing steakhouse? Their pork belly. Yeah. So that appetizer that you roll out with that uh, nice cherry apple habanero glaze on it. That that's courtesy of the uh, Texas pepper jelly. There it is. Oh, there you go. Um, any other pro tips you guys got for anybody that's going to bust out some pork belly this weekend? Mm, I might um, be able to give you a pro tip after I've cooked it for one time in my life. Perfect. So <laughs> Perfect. I think Your input is being deleted from the episode. I, I think the I think also if, if you if you if you cook a, a slab or a bigger portion at a time, um, temperature is always the thing. Like, listen, hey, this is not your 175 or two. If you're fighting the grill, you're like, well, it's almost 200 degrees. That ain't the time to put it on, right? So you want to find your optimal, I think 250, 275 is optimal to throw that on. And if, if you're on a Weber, uh, you do it offset. You you put your uh, your, uh, your 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 pork belly just just off of the coals, let it go for a little bit, and then you start searing it up. Sear it up really good on both sides, just like you do a steak, and but find the temperature you want. Find the the medium, right? Poke it, uh, put a toothpick, put your probe in it. But 160 degrees, I'm I'm starting to think I'm gonna pull. Just to be honest with you. Pull like done done? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe higher depending on like how it feels. Uh and I can see go to one eighties. I'm not going to uh I'm not I'm not going all the way to two hundreds. I just feel like it's gonna be over overdone. The meat's uh, gonna be tough. What well, well, the thinner you slice it, the smaller they are. It probably go to two fifty. You don't even know it, you know. So those are always tough. But but I but I want I I want that to, that that cut that slice to be like a just a morsel of a pork chop. You know, they're, they're very. It, it almost like it almost like a pork chop. You know, like almost like a, a ribeye, a ribeye pork chop, or a pork ribeye, or whatever you you know what I mean. Like they 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 have that texture a little bit. Um, if you overcook it, they don't. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, if you get one that's like really meaty. Are you paying attention to in, internal temperature on, on pork belly at all? Or are you pretty much just going by feel? I think I'm going by feel. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not really probing, waiting for it. You know, it, you and not to try to beat this down as as much as we've already done. So, but you've seen people like, oh, we're going to cook this like a brisket. We're taking this to 203. We're going to take that pork belly to 203. I think we're it's overdone. We're, we're going to do it halfway. We're going to cook till we get like 180, 175, and then we're going to wrap it. We're going to throw it in there like pretty much like any competition cook does when they wrap their ribs. They're going to throw butter, brown sugar, honey, and any type of other sauce that they want to put in there and then wrap it up and then throw in the oven and let it finish like just braising and, and finishing off. It, it's going to be tender. Uh, you lose a little bit of the bark. You lose a little bit of the um, the the crispiness, uh, yes, like that you, you would get that, with the right? bacon or whatever. Yeah. So, it, there's a lot of trade offs. So that's I mean, what I'm saying. I, like, t- take it to 160 and then grill it off, like sear it off, mm-hmm. to where it's just like you know, and then rest it. I, th- I think if you take it to 160, 165, you sear it off, let it go to 180, 185, uh, and then cover it up, rest it for like 30 minutes. That thing is going to be crazy good. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. No. <laughs> Wait, why'd you go? Why'd you go all? Uh, what's his name? Who? I don't know. You had your like Danny Dufresne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. No. Hey, l- listen, can we go back to the Blue Moon for a second? It's phenomenal. Can we just say, yeah? I mean, like, the only way to shit the bed today was John. And John, you can get a life, man. This um, is I actually got a better. second one. Nobody else got a second You get a second one. Me, you and I did. These two that gave it 9.44s, uh, they did not get another one. Man. So well, There's not seconds Skull for everybody. Uh, uh, you know right, what? Hey, right. I mean, that concludes the barbecue talk of this. Uh, we're yeah. we're going to hey, put... Good night. I think we we'll like, just... <laughs> We beat uh, take the hell care. out of uh, pork belly. Hasta Waco. Uh, I'm not really sure if anybody learned anything. Uh, hopefully. Uh, so, so listen, yeah. I, I hope mean, people just no. got inspired to go cook some pork belly, listen, honestly. Pork belly, you can brine it. You can marinate. It's Obviously, still cheap. I'm, I'm always a big proponent of just like, hey, 
marinate, uh, put as much seasoning as you can, get something going in. Pork always takes a lot of pineapple juice, orange juice, uh, in any citrus it can handle, right? Um, don't be afraid to play around with the herbs to mix that with that. Um, and then, yeah, dude, show us your best freaking uh, pork belly. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, these are guys from Texas that we're that we're, we're we're talking from our experience and then how we view this and whatever else. Like, and maybe it's limited or or not uh, for some of us, but I think for James and I, we've cooked plenty of pork belly, and there, there's just something about having that Texas crust. That, that crunch to it, the, the softness, the tenderness, and that perfect. And, and there's only been a few times that we've had it, probably, mm-hmm. right? You know, where we're always striving to get there, uh, where it's just been like, damn, that was so yeah. freaking good. And you're, you come back and go, why am I not doing this all the time? I've done this for events. I, I've cooked pork belly. I've had people come up to me going, this is the best I've ever had in my life. That hell, we did what two or three slabs, four slabs, uh, for an event we had uh, last year. Uh, for like you know a little private thing at, at at work whatever else, it was amazing, amazing. So, yeah, I, but it's it, I, th- I think it's probably very forgiving um, versus uh, mm-hmm. um, dealing with a leaner meat. So yeah, I started pork belly, brisket pork belly. Why not start there? What you got, John? Um, well, I have a barbecue win, but I don't remember. I don't think I sent it to Raul. There was a video. Raul. Raul. <laughs> he still can't say it. That, that's no, it's not, not it. that he one. He still no, that's, cannot say that's it, That's James's uh, pork belly video. Yeah. Well, I my video of James's pork belly. Oh, okay. I thought that was it. I'm, no, I, I sent you one. Uh, it was it was probably like a month ago. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you probably have it. If I even sent it, I may, I may not have You're sent a liar. it. liar. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about it anyway, and then I'm liar. just going to add the video in later. Mm-hmm. And we'll pretend like y'all saw the video, and then when the listeners are yeah. listening to this, they'll see the video. They won't see it. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, th- this is from uh, one of Luke's buddies, Con. I don't know if you guys have met Con before. Oh uh, yeah, Con. Uh, yeah. Have you? Really? Yeah, no, I so. uh, maybe yeah. so. Yeah, you might have. Anyways, he happened to message us. He he kind of tracks us on our social medias, and he's like, "Hey, this is the best thing I ever cooked," and sent this video, and it's a freaking beef Wellington. Wow. Yeah. I don't I, I wish I had the video, but I'll I'll post the video. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, you will see the video. Uh he made a beef him and his his little brother. They're like he's like, I'm not that great with the uh the keeping track of the times or whatever. So my brother helped me with that, but it, it looked amazing. It was cooked well and it looked awesome. And I was like, dude, I'm gonna use this as a barbecue win. Uh, I wish I had more of the info here with me, but I don't. But uh Con, you're gonna be a winner and you're gonna get some uh Sucker busters, sucker busters. Everybody wants some sucker busters. Come on, Con. Yeah, seventeen years old making bad Wellingtons out here. Yeah, yeah, so, that's awesome. With a Pretty lattice, cool. with the, with the crust. I don't know if I had a lattice, but definitely had some kind of crusting yeah. around the outside. So mm. looked good. Yeah, Pretty cool. that's what I got. That's all I got cool. for the uh, that. Well, hey guys, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I've enjoyed tonight. Enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I, I'm not sure if the energy was what I wanted or it, if it was. It, it got it, better what, after the beer. Review. It did. <laughs> Really you were, you were exactly right. You know what I mean? Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Ralph, I, I, Ralph I, cut that out. I, I, I really uh, appreciate you, Matt. And what, uh, what, I think what, you what, really what? saved the day. Uh, James, John, love you guys. Uh, hey, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah. yeah. There's some poor bastard listening to this episode, and it is Christmas. And he's like, Merry Christmas, guys. Filthy animal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, feel the year 2077. Getting yeah. visited by the ghost of Christmas past. And Let's go. The ghost of Christmas Jan. April 11th. <laughs> yeah, dude, can you imagine if I was your ghost? Okay. Hey, if I was your ghost? Oh. Oh, man. All right. Hey, guys, honestly, it's been great talking barbecue with you. Peace. Thanks, everybody. We've been great. As we close out, big thanks to SmokerBuilder.com and the MBBQA for their unwavering support. Absolutely, and cheers to Barbecue News Magazine, Suckle Busters, and Dow Strong Knives for their contributions. And you know Yeti always has our back, and Cooling Nation ensures our drinks stay perfectly cold. Lastly, props to Cambro Manufacturing and, of course, a spicy nut to Chicks of Smoke Seasoning. Thanks to all for powering this show. Until next time, keep smoking.